Priscilla, also called Prisca. This is from the book All the Women of the Bible. I think it was written in the 70s. Let's read about Priscilla. A leader in the New Testament church. One of the most influential women in the New Testament church was Priscilla, a Jewess who had come out of Italy with her husband Aquila to live first at Corinth and about 18 months later at Ephesus. They had left Rome at the time when Claudius, in his cruel and unjust edict, had expelled all Jews. Her prominence is evidenced by many facts. She became the teacher of the eloquent and learned Apollos. The church assembled in her home, both at Ephesus and at Rome, and she was known throughout Christendom in her day. Though she and her husband labored together, in three out of five places her name appears first. Evidence enough that she played the more important part in the early Christian church. No doubt she was a woman of studious and religious endowments, also one of practical ability. It is recorded that she and her husband were tent makers, and in their home in the weaving sections of Corinth and Ephesus became a rendezvous for those wanting to know more about the new faith. Because Paul was a tent maker, we can picture them weaving the goat's hair cloth and taking and talking over the new Christian gospel as they worked. And we know that both Priscilla and Aquila were responsive to this wonderful new message. When Paul departed from Corinth and embarked for Syria, they were with him. They came to Ephesus and left and he left them there. After Paul had entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews and had again set sail for Syria, he committed the work in Ephesus to Priscilla and Aquila. When Paul returned a year or more later, he found they had established a well-organized congregation in Ephesus. There Priscilla and Aquila ranked next to Paul and Timothy in the work of their congregation. Later, Paul wrote his first letter to Corinthians from Ephesus and sent greetings from Aquila and Prisca with the church that is in their house. Is it not evidence enough that Priscilla presided over a devout, peaceful home to which Christians came and were uplifted? In his solemn charge to Timothy a second time, Paul, before his approaching martyrdom, sends salutations to Priscilla and Aquila. Later, after the death of Claudius, we find that Aquila and Priscilla returned to Rome. In writing Priscilla's name here, the last time, Paul used the diminutive Prisca, signifying his intimate friendship for her. The affection she and her husband had for him is manifested in those lines in which he said they had for his life laid down their own necks, and unto them he gladly rendered thanks. An amazing aspect of Priscilla's life was that though she had to manage her household and weave tent cloth, she found time to be a thorough student of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of her first services was not only to teach, but to expound to the eloquent Apollos, a man well versed in Old Testament scriptures, introduced to the Christian religion first by John the Baptist. Apollos had come to Ephesus to speak. Priscilla and Aquila probably were the first to recognize that Apollo had a superficial knowledge, had only a superficial knowledge of the new Christian faith. And so they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Priscilla was doubtless wise enough to realize Apollo's limited knowledge could hurt the Christian cause. No superficial convert herself, she was determined that this eminent man should be a well-informed, inspiring exponent of the gospel. What a great privilege was hers to expound the way of God more perfectly. Noted for her hospitality, she may have invented 
invited Apollos to stay in her home. For we have the phrase, Priscilla and Aquilo took Apollos unto them. We can be sure that Priscilla was not only a woman of scholarly attainments, but one willing to make sacrifices in the spreading of the gospel, for she lived at a time when a Christian faced great persecution. But Priscilla was not afraid. Many honors have been heaped upon her by early Christian writers. It was suggested that Priscilla was the author of Hebrews, but this suggestion is not supported by proof. Historical facts not recorded in the Bible attest to Priscilla's fame. Tertullius records, By the holy Prisca the gospel is preached. One of the oldest catacombs of Rome, the Commentarium Priscilla, was named in her honor, and a church, Tertulla St. Prisca, was erected on the Aventine in Rome. It bore the inscription, Tertulla Aquila et Prisca. Prisca's name appears often on monuments of Rome, and Acts of St. Prisca was a legendary writing popular in the 10th century. All of this helps us to know why writers in the New Testament broke all conventionalities and three times out of five placed Priscilla's name before that of her husband. Christians honor her because she served God acceptably with reverence and godly fear and because she was not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Priscilla, let us not forget either, had entertained the stranger, Paul, and from him had learned to strive to be perfect in every good work, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ.